Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is Is Afghanistan Really the Graveyard of Empires? By the channel History Matters. Here is another History Matters video. Uh, obviously, again, very short one. Yeah, it says short in my documentary, so that makes sense. But yeah, this is a really good topic. Is Afghanistan? I mean, throughout the throughout the history, that has been the case, right? Uh, some great empire comes there, right? Mughals. Uh, you know, and uh, Ottomans, I think, right? Uh, even the long ago, uh, or Persians and things like that. All those empires basically came there, right? And, uh, you know, basically, you know, couldn't hold it, right? Even in the current times, modern nations couldn't hold Afghanistan. There's a reason behind it. Uh, <laughs> it's mostly mountainous area, right? And especially in the current times with the, you know, United States, basically. Uh, they try to take over the place and there is a like a ring road type of system right there's a one road that is kind of a circle way the main road and uh, problem with that is there are so many mountains there that it's really hard to keep track of all the cave systems locals know it but others cannot so it's really hard to you know i guess take it and i guess you know take it completely because there's always going to be some resistance there so I guess that is the reason why Afghanistan was always a problem for anybody who's trying to conquer it, right? Uh, you know, empires have forts and castles that gives them edge. Afghanistan has mountains. I guess it's kind of same theory, right? You can hide in a mountain, whatever. But yeah, so let's watch it. Afghanistan is sometimes referred to as the graveyard of empires, but just how accurate is that reputation? To find out, yeah, okay. So let's watch it. Afghanistan, a country which is sometimes referred to as the graveyard of empires. The idea being that a great state comes to conquer, has a pretty difficult time of it and the debacles there lead to the eventual collapse of said state's empire. But this raises the question of just how true this is. Is Afghanistan really the graveyard of empires? So to begin, the idea of there being a state called Afghanistan is a new one. The area and many parts of it had changed hands many many times in the past millennia. The Persians, the Macedonians, the Umayyad Caliphate, the Mongols and their successors were all able to hold and control at least some of the territories of what is now Afghanistan and many did so for a long time. And so this would suggest that Afghanistan isn't really the graveyard of empires, right? Well, kind of. By the turn of the 19th century an independent Afghan state existed and included much of what's now modern day Pakistan. So what changed and how did Afghanistan get its reputation? Well, as of 1835, it looked like this, having lost some territory to the Sikh Empire. Also at this point, the British were strengthening their grip on India. And for them, Afghanistan appeared to be a crisis waiting to happen, since it could be used by the ever-expanding Russian Empire as a route to invade India. And as such, the British opted to befriend the Emir of Afghanistan. Just kidding, they invaded and tried to replace him with his ousted predecessor who they felt would be much nicer to them. The British were confident that this would be a somewhat quick and easy war, but fun fact, no. At first, things went well, however, things turned sour pretty quickly. Mostly because of the geography of Afghanistan and also the hostility of the people there to outside rule. And eventually, holding Afghan territory became too costly. And yeah, okay, so I reacted to that video uh, about how uh, certain, you know, Indian Sikhs basically, you know, took on thousands of, uh, you know, attackers. I guess it happened around the same area, right? Between, uh, you know, war between Afghanistan and India because of the British Empire, right? British Empire versus Russia. So I guess that is th around this similar time. But yeah, obviously uh, it's going to be, the point is going to be mountain. Afghanistan didn't exist as we know of today always. But the area that is Afghanistan right now always was the problem because of the mountain area. It was really a problem to conquer it. So the British opted to leave Kabul, which led to the infamous 1842 retreat. As you'll know, the British Empire didn't collapse in the wake of this loss and so naturally Afghanistan did not develop a reputation of wrecking empires at this point. This is doubly true when you consider the fact that in 1878 Britain invaded again and this time they succeeded and established a puppet leader there to keep the Russians away from India. And after this Afghanistan was, for the most part, a peaceful place and it wasn't invaded again until the 1970s, this time by the Soviet Union. In 1978 the Afghan government was overthrown by a communist coup with the backing of the USSR. It began to centralise power and implement broad sweeping reforms which, to put it mildly, were not popular. Armed insurrection began with the backing of the Western powers and the USSR intervened in 1979 to prop up the communist government there. At first, things went well and the major cities and the routes between them were secured quickly. But a guerrilla war took hold and the Soviets lacked the ability to put an end to the Mujahideen's fight against them and so, after 10 years of increasing costs in terms of money and lives, Mikhail Gorbachev called for the withdrawal of Soviet troops. 
Yeah, see, that's the ring road, basically. Yeah, there you go. This is the ring road, right? Uh, th this is the main road that you have to basically occupy if you want to have control over Afghanistan. But any countries like Soviet Union, even the USA, any country basically try to take it to that mountainous area where there's always some kind of a guerrilla resistance, right? You can never get rid of that. So unless you're planning to fight forever, it's, uh, it's going to be a really hard thing. So I guess that's how it became the graveyard of empires. Against them. And so, after 10 years of increasing costs in terms of money and lives, Mikhail Gorbachev called for the withdrawal of Soviet troops. This was nothing short of an international humiliation for the USSR, and as you'll know, over two years later, the USSR had fully collapsed. And it was this that gave Afghanistan its reputation of being the graveyard of empires. But is this a fair assessment? Come on, really? Afghanistan killed the USSR? I think that's a stretch, isn't it? Come on. <laughs> yeah, is this a fair assessment? Well, no. Afghanistan being the place that empires go to die is based almost exclusively upon Britain's troubles there the first time it invaded, and also the USSR's collapse shortly after its withdrawal from there in 1989, to which the war in Afghanistan only played a very small part. To conclude, Afghanistan is simply not the graveyard of empires. Historically, it's been fairly easy to conquer and has been conquered many times, although holding on to it is another matter entirely. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching, with a special thanks to my patrons James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Marvin Cassow, Rob Waterhouse, Mo, James Castaneda Yeah, okay. So, I always assumed the Graveyard Empire means it is, like he said, it's hard to hold it down and that's why it's Graveyard of Empire. Because any empire, first of all, any empire tries to, you know, keep it will have to be bleed eventually, right? Because they're going to bleed resources just trying to keep it, right? There's a reason why US have pulled out very recently, right? I mean, it's a constant war if you want to keep it. I mean, that's just fucked up. By the way, recent events, right? There was a, I don't know, was video circling just recently that Afghani news anchor was selling street food somewhere, which was a really sad sign, man, right? I saw that, like, what the fuck? This guy was a anchor, right? News anchor that appeared on TV every time. He was an, he was not some uh, news interview guy that we see that, you know, walk. it was a proper anchor, right? And he was selling street food. So that's just fucked up. But yeah, basically, it's really hard to, uh, you know, hold Afghanistan. There is always going to be some guerrilla resistance there. And uh, obviously, in the times of British Empire, Soviet Union, you know, try to take Afghanistan as a strategic point because you're fighting other empires is going to be a bit costly. But yeah, is it truly the graveyard of empires or no empire is directly going to fall because of Afghanistan? But yeah, it's, it's, it's going to bleed them dry. Right, well, that was, is Afghanistan really the graveyard of empires? Well, the channel History Matters. If you like, very excellent, don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you next time.